one of us sent me a video from YouTube and was a bit confused about some of the things that um, was said in the video. So that is where we're going to start off today. We're going to allow her share what the video said and if you can give us a synopsis what was said in the video so we we'll like everyone will have like a background understanding then we we'll, i will take it from there and hopefully we'll handle that in less than 30 minutes then i'll teach you something else which i already plan to teach today in another 20 minutes then we'll be done hopefully before eight so let's invite sophie sophie now um, share your consent first give us like a background of that video you know what the video is all yeah, about right. then you share your concerns about what you what what they said in the video hello everybody this is sophie everybody go to go to the chat and say hello to sophie sophie is a counselor in training yeah so um i mean i have been a christian I'm quite still quite a baby in it so probably about two years um yeah. but i i made my commitment and i love god and i love jesus and i have been trying to learn a lot um in these last two years and I'm just finding recently a lot of feed, news feed on my social media accounts and people talking to me and TV and stuff like that. But um, I've been asking questions about the Bible, you know, what, what, what made these books so important? And, um, why these books and what, what, why are these people important? And then I'm getting stuff that says, um, it's quite alarming really like it, it's saying that certain books were put out or um that we've been told lies that it's not to do with a one god that um christianity and judaism came from uh it was coerced into a monotheistic religion and you know it's to do with uh extraterrestrials and it's a, it's a lot of conspiracy theory that that seems to be coming up on my feed and I think that's just from me trying to ask normal biblical questions and it's coming at me um, from many different sources, even, even from my friends, you know, they're all into talking about these, these concepts that are coming out, especially with new age stuff as well, uh, meditation and new age practices. And it's all to do with vibrational fields, all that kind of stuff, you know, um, yeah. what do they call it now? The law of attraction. Yep. all that kind of stuff mm. yeah so that's kind of what i've been concerned about um uh, whilst i've been exploring my christianity really and, and my journey with jesus and, and god and, and yeah I, I, I don't really seem to have much clarity um and i think it's a very hard difficult subject to discuss especially with fellow christians because some people are too afraid <laughs> to even talk about it <laughs> yeah. so it's nice to have an openness to be able to ask questions without feeling afraid to do so yeah absolutely and that's what we'll provide here. So you can come with your questions, whatever question, whatever, however stupid you think it sounds, bring your questions every Tuesday. We're going to try with the help of the Holy Spirit to provide answers that are Bible based and not our own opinion of what the Bible says. And I'm glad you said a lot of things about um, sort of the new age concept of religion where all religions are supposed to be one. There is, there is no one god that they are all together and all the things they say under the new age movement and i'm glad you mentioned that like the video you sent to me i think it's very very interesting very very interesting they are talking about um, the holy spirit and they're trying to explain using the hebrew word that was translated to spirit which is ruach and Long and short of the video, if I can sum it up, is that they're saying that, number one, that the Spirit of God is not everywhere. That it can come and it can go and that it's somewhat physical. Somewhat physical, that it can be seen. If I get deep into what was said, let me lay some foundational facts that will help us understand what they're saying. Number one is that there are three different kinds of knowledge. In fact, there should be more. But for us, humans and Christians, there are three different kinds of knowledge. The first is information. 
information, data, whatever, that feeds our mind. Hey, my name is Chukudum. Oh, you take that in, in your mind. Whenever you see my face, you'll be like, oh, that's Chukudum. That's information. There's another knowing of Chukudum that you don't have, that my wife has. Because she has been with me, or we've been, we've been together for 24 years. So there's a knowing she has of me that most of you, even in, in this meeting, don't have. That a lot of people I've met outside don't have, my friends don't have, that she has. Because she has been with me, she knows all my nuances, she even knows how I think, she knows how I will react to certain things, she can tell what I would do in certain circumstances and situations, even though I'm not there. She can predict me. That knowledge is not normal information. It is a deeper kind of knowledge. It's deeper. It's deeper. It's a different knowing. Then there's another knowledge that she has of me, which Permit me to use this word, which I call experience. Right? Because she has been with me, she has seen how I talk, how I behave, how I react to things. She has experienced me because she has been in contact with me, I believe, longer than even my parents or my siblings have been with me. 24 years now we've been together. 24. So she has the knowledge of me, she has a revelation of me, then she has an experience of me. Now, most of these guys that go about, you know, promoting all those doctrine, ideas about the Bible, ideas about religion, a few of them, they have good knowledge of the Bible and I'm going to be honest with you, more than I do. Yes, they do. Because the guy knows the Hebrew Bible inside out. I don't. He knows the Greek inside out. In fact, the second speaker said he has learned, I think, seven languages. So he's good with languages. So he understands Greek, Latin, Hebrew, and a lot of other languages. So they know, they have knowledge of the languages <laughs> with, that the Bible was written in. Having that knowledge of the Bible is not enough. It's not enough. That is why I always talk about asking, inviting the Holy Spirit whenever you want to read the Bible. If you read the Bible without the Holy Spirit, you will end up with information, which what those guys have. Some of them don't even have at all. But the one you sent to me, I can attest to the fact that they have knowledge of the Word of God. But the Holy Spirit is the game changer. When you invite the Holy Spirit to come and teach you, He's not going to teach you from outside of you. He's going to teach you from inside of you. And this is very important. Why did I say that? Until the Holy Spirit lives inside of you he cannot teach you the word that takes you to the next level if you are not a born again christian you don't have access to the teaching ministry of the holy spirit because the holy spirit that teaches us is the holy spirit within not the holy spirit upon and i can tell you factually that those guys though highly intelligent highly knowledgeable are not born again. I can from listening to them. Because when you're listening to someone, one of the first one of the things you must try your possible best to predetermine or determine why they're speaking is the agenda. What agenda do they have? Will tell you where they are coming from and where they are going to. So because I could deduce their agenda, I know for a fact that they're not born again. Though they are highly knowledgeable, more than me of the word of God. Highly knowledgeable. So the Holy Spirit takes 
the word of God and unveils it. That is why there's a prayer I always pray that Paul asks us to always pray from Ephesians chapter 1. When you read from verse 16 to like verse 18, there's a prayer. He says, pray this prayer. And it's all about asking that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of, of him be granted you. See, I've been born again all my life, to be honest. But I only had information of God's word till I started praying this prayer about 30 years ago. This prayer took me to a place that when I read the word of God, I see things. I mean, it's I can't explain it. I cannot describe it. The only way you can understand it fully is by experiencing it. Now, that takes me to the third level of knowledge. When the, you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit un, unveils the word. He will tell you that this that was said here, see actually what it means. He unveils it. He uncovers it. The uncovering of the word comes through the person of the Holy Spirit. Then there's experience. Experience changes everything changes everything those guys don't have revelation they don't have experience if not they will not have associated the holy spirit to some kind of ufo but when you move from revelation to experiencing god something changes what do i mean by experience what they are trying to say that ruach is that it can appear and it can go that is somewhat physical is exactly what I mentioned on Sunday for those that joined us for Sunday service. When I talked about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach of God, is everywhere. It's right here in this room where I am. It's right there in that room where you are. But it is not manifest. He has not been made manifest. There are some things, when we start doing, we can make the presence of the Holy Spirit to be made manifest. One of the ways you can make the Holy Spirit to make himself manifest is through prayer. There are some certain prayers, when you start praying, you get to a point in that prayer you can feel, I don't mean you're in your senses, no. You can actually feel physically on your body the manifest presence of God. Another way we can make the Holy Spirit make himself manifest is through worship. There are times when you worship God, you get so deep in that worship that you will feel literally on your skin, all around you, that there is a presence all around you. Though he has been there, though he has been in you since you gave your life to Christ, though he has been there all the while, he has not made himself manifest. So that manifestation of the Spirit is what they are trying to say that is a different kind of spirit that is physical now we must understand that god is in three persons the father the son and the holy spirit the holy spirit cannot be seen that's why the bible used the word wind it cannot be seen it's invincible nobody has ever seen the holy spirit at all but some people have gotten some glimpse of god some glimpse of God. And it's everywhere in the Bible. How do you think God the Father interacted with Adam? The Bible says he comes down every evening to interact with Adam. So that means Adam, before he fell, could see God. But for us that are now fallen, the Bible says we can get a glimpse of God, but we will not see his face. That's exactly what he told Moses in Exodus. He pleaded with God in Exodus 31. Show me your face. Show me your face. He held on to God. I want to see you. I want to see you. God said, fine. 
I'm going to pass by you. But you can't see my face and leave. So I'm going to cover your eyes. I'm going to pass by you and allow you see my backsides. So Moses saw, somewhat got a glimpse of God, but he didn't see the face of God. But he showed God a glimpse of God. That is that, that, is that glimpse that Ezekiel saw in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. It was a glimpse of God, not the Holy Spirit. And that was a mistake those guys were making. They could not tell the difference between God, who is a spirit, and the Holy Spirit. There is God, who is the spirit, and there is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit no one has ever seen at all. But God, somewhat, people, humans, have got a glimpse of him. Not his face, because said nobody can see his face and live. But they've got a glimpse of him. I'm going to give you an example. Remember, two or three scriptures is a matter established. So I've talked about, I've talked about um, Adam. I've talked about Ezekiel that actually saw a glimpse of God. The third person that saw a glimpse of God is John in his visions. Read Revelation chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 8. He was taken to heaven. I don't have time. I would have read some of these things. And he could see. He got a glimpse of God. He tried to describe God. And you see his description of God and the description that Ezekiel gave all coincides. They all are the same. Never take one scripture and run with it if there are not two or three scriptures to support it. Finally, the Bible tells us clearly this one I'm going to read. In Revelations, Revelations 22, verse 4. Talking about us in the new Jerusalem, in the new world, in the new earth, and in the new heavens, God will leave this planet we currently call heaven and come and live on earth with us. And the Bible says in verse 4 that we shall see his face. Men have been catching a glimpse of God's backside or a glimpse of him, but <laughs> in our resurrected state, in the new world, we will see his face. Face. Isn't that amazing? It says they shall see his face and his name shall be upon their foreheads. And I'm going to agree with you guys. Do all you can do to get an experience of God. It's very simple. I've taught it to you guys. It's just having a relationship with God. By constantly having a conversation with God, talking with him, telling him things. You know, the way you talk to a friend. Remember saying that God spoke with Moses the way a friend will talk with a friend face to face. The way a friend will talk to a friend. You know, start cultivating the habit. Why the Holy Spirit lives in you and is everywhere. Wake up in the morning say, good morning, Holy Spirit. How are you doing? You are struggling to, through, through life, having some challenges here and there. Have a chat with him. Just be, be conscious of his presence. That's the, that's the third key. I talked about prayer. I talked about worship. The third key, which actually should be the first key, is consciousness of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Once you are conscious that He's in you, that He's all around you, act like it. If you know that your friend is in the city room and you have, something is bothering you, you leave your room, go to the city room and have a chat with him. Or you pick up your phone and call the friend and have a chat with him. That same way, Consciously start speaking, talking to the Holy Spirit. As you read the Bible, invite Him to teach you. And when you get to some places where it might, you know, seem a bit confusing, say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Tell me, what does this mean? And believe He will talk to you. He might not say anything that day, but trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Somewhere along the line, he will talk to you. Either through somebody else. He could even use me to answer some of the questions that you have. He could use whatever to answer the questions you have. It will get to a point. It will get to a point that he start talking to you. Ask my wife. Um, she will ask me, okay, what, what are you preaching on Sunday? I said, I don't know yet. When I am having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. At times, it will get Saturday night. You're like, 
What are you preaching tomorrow? I'm like, I don't know yet. We're like, really? Yeah, you always do this. But she said, oh, I understand, I understand. Why? I'm asking the Holy Spirit, what should I share? What should I share with your people? I'm having a conversation. Constantly having a conversation. All of a sudden, it will hit. You say, teach this. Talk about this. Talk about this. He speaks from within. He doesn't speak from without. And this is a very clear difference. It is demons that speak from without. The Holy Spirit speaks from within. However, however, there's something we call the voice of the Holy Spirit that can speak from without. But it is very rare. It's very rare. He speaks mostly from within. We call it the inner voice from within because that's where he resides. He lives on your inside. When the Holy Spirit speaks from without is when sometimes when danger is imminent and he has been warning you internally but probably you've not been sensitive to pick that voice and there's imminent danger that's when he usually now speaks from without you know as a last ditch um, act to save you from that danger all oh, right we've done enough we've done justice i believe to to this <laughs>